Hey everyone, Sam Dees here, and thank you for joining me today. So we're going to be taking a look at OpenAir 2, which is one of the um, one of the updates, the plugins for this new version of 6.5 for Studio One. And supposedly it works with surround sound now. It has like surround sound IRs and stuff like that. So I'm going to take a look at that. We're going to take a look at that. And I'm actually going to use it on my film that I used in the first video. So this is basically like a part two. So the first video, um, and in this scene, um, this is a short film that I made with my family, just a fun, you know, uh, monster action film that I made at my home with a green screen, green screen studio in my living room <laughs> on the iPhone using CamTrack AR and SkyGlass. And again, it's just, they're, you know, we're just having fun. It's actually like an hour long, but I uh, do want to give it at least some good production volume with, uh, in terms of sound and music. So um and and using dolby atmos uh, dolby atmos came at the perfect time for this because i can really uh try to utilize it in this film and see how it turns out uh, if you watched the last video you, you probably saw one of the action scenes that i did before so let's get right into it let's open up open air and let's first of all let's take a look at the plugin before we dive in so this is, uh, so if you look at this, nothing really has changed much in open air. Now it has the, the two, but, uh, and you know, there are some things like enable LFE. I don't remember that exactly. I never really used open air much before I was, I preferred using uh, other reverbs like Phoenix Verb and stuff. But um, from what I recall, it doesn't look that much different than what it used to look like. But if we go in here, uh, well, obviously we can load our, our custom IRs, but if we go here, we now have 3D IR, which is supposedly the um, the sound the surround versions of our reverb. So we have chambers, we have halls, we have large halls, origin IR. So I'm not sure what that is. So origin impulse response, not sure what that is, but we have different spaces. We actually, we actually have more options in stereo. Um, I probably would go normally to one of the post uh, rooms, especially for a scene like this. Uh, but let's see what fits this scene. Okay, so this is a rough version of a scene where two of our characters are in a library uh, trying to find a way um, of how to defeat this giant cobra that's attacking the city of Miami. Um, the one of the protagonists um, who's a professor uh, thinks it's related to <clears throat> in the Egyptian uh, mythology. So that's kind of the context of it. It's, it's pretty, pretty ridiculous, but it's funny. As you see here, we have, let me, uh, let me actually mute uh, this track. So we don't get that effect. As you see here, we have our university library. Oh, me. Oh my. So what exactly are we looking for? So we're having, first of all, I'm, I'm going to have to do, do some denoising on this because this um, I shot it further away. Uh, so that might have to be its own thing. Um, and maybe when we get close up here, I might want to treat it different because now we're up, we're, you know, we're closer to the subject. So I don't want to get the interface too cluttered. Let's see if we can denoise this, uh, first of all, a little bit before we start applying reverb. Um, and we might have to do some sound leveling, but I don't want to get too much into that because the um, this is tutorials now. For that, this is just more exploring open air. So, as you see here, we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply that uh, noise reduction to the high frequencies. As you see here, we have our university library. Oh me, oh my. Okay. Now let's um. Let's see if we can put that in a space. As you see here, we have our university library. Oh, me. Oh, my. So I think that being in the center channel is fine as it is. Um, let me see. Here we have our university library. Oh, me. Oh, my. Because when we cut to this wide shot, which is what they're looking at from their point of view, there's not much dialogue going on there. I mean, we if they were talking off camera a lot, and like we're seeing this and they were talking, maybe I can, you know, send it to the back speakers, but I probably wouldn't do that. I would just, I like to keep dialogue center, um, you know, either just center center or, um, you know, phantom center, just 
being you know spreading it across the center channel and the left right channels just to to make sure that we have our um, bases covered but so i'm going to leave this like that but this is where open air really could shine so let's take a look at how we can use open air now when it comes to reverbs we can use it as an insert or as a send obviously i'm going to use it as an insert in this in this instance and see i'm just going to copy it over so we have it in here and see what like you know what we can use that um feels right rather because i don't know if we exactly have a library preset here but uh we're just going to go by what feels right i guess so let's see oh so again we're going to go into 3d ir since we are we are mixing and we're doing this in surround let's see spaces so we have big stage black forest into the deep none of these i think could work so let's go into large halls we have arch archangel baroque chamber orchestra even orchestral hall but not really amphitheater ancient hall assembly hall a court a court oh no how about a grand hall maybe a grand hall could work let's try it so uh this is nice now we get some nice um images here um I Assuming if we go to the other ones, does it change? Yeah, so I guess it changes depending on what the uh, impulse name is. And then they just kind of um, designate a preset name to it, um, depending on how, it, you know, the EQs, the, um, the size and everything they applied to that specific IR. So I'm going to go back to Grand Hall and see what that sounds like. Okay, so let's listen to that real quick. Uh, I have it at 100% mix. Okay, and again, if I if I go in here, I can EQ this. Uh, I can also add an EQ after the fact. I like EQing separately, but let's try. We can also play around with the length, uh, the fade in, you know, cross feed, the fade out as well. Um, if we want to get picky, we can play around with that stuff. We can play with the amount of early reflections, early reflections versus late reflections, the gain compensation, um, and the size of the room. So we're at four. <clears throat> 4.9 seconds uh we can also add pre-delay to that okay um so we have a lot of options here and it looks like this is set up for 7 1.4 so let's listen to this at a hundred percent mix that is okay i'm gonna stop it there it's way too much as you see here we have our university library oh me oh mother sounds pretty nice and just to give you a bit of context, um, first of all, the library is empty because I was just too lazy to put a lot of metahumans in the scene. Uh, but also in the film, prior to the scene, the president, yes, there's a president in this film, uh, uh, orders an evacuation of Miami. Uh, so that's why it's all empty. And these two um, decided to stay behind and try to defeat the Cobra. So um, I kind of saved myself uh, there a little bit by... <laughs> Uh, working that into the plot so I don't, you know, I don't have to add more people in this scene. So that's how that goes. So that's why it sounds, uh, so I don't mind a huge empty sound. I'm going to play around with the mix just a little bit because I actually don't hate that. As you see here, we have our university library. Um, let me play around with the size a little bit. As you see here, we have our university library. Oh, me, oh my. As you see here, we have our university library. Oh, me, oh my. Okay, so that actually sounds pretty nice. Um, again, we're listening to it bare bones. We're not, uh, you know, <clears throat> I do have, a, I have music that I composed for this scene, which I don't have here, but so you also have to think that there's gonna be music. Um, I, you know, think it's like some, piano stuff with some strings like an ostinato thing just kind of in the in the background so that is also going to uh, occupy um uh, occupy some sonic space so uh but this bare bones doesn't sound very bad as you see here we have our university library and um you know we can either play with a spacing on this okay we can make this wider we can bring this closer so let's play around with that and see what that looks like. i think it's at the furthest point so i think it should be fine as you see here, we have our university library. Oh, me, oh, my. 
Okay. And if we want to get, if we want to make it sound even further, we can just use a simple EQ trick where we can't EQ after the fact. Just close it, close this. Where I'm going to use a shelf, a high shelf like this at 12 dB and maybe a low shelf at 12 dB. And let's have the, you know, sort of a low mid frequency or the, you know, just kind of a very wide Q. Let's lower this, let's lower this here. So rule of thumb, if a source is further away from you, it loses, it loses its high and low frequencies as well as some mids. Um, if I'm speaking to you this close, you know, I have more bass and more highs. If I'm talking over here, you see I lose a, more bass and more highs. So we can approximate that in the, the, um, in the space or in this scene. As you see here, we have our, you know, as you see here, we have our university library. Oh, me, oh my. As Something you about. see here, we have our university library. So maybe too much highs, let me just cut that over here. As you see here, we have our university library. Oh, me, oh my. But again, not necessary. Cause again, this is, this is, um, this is dialogue. That kind of stuff is uh, is more important if we want to give that effect. If we want to hear someone really, really far away uh, as an effect in the film, like we want to approximate that, that's fine. But in the context of this scene, the way it is, it's fine. So that's for that scene. So I think that's sounding pretty nice. Maybe in, in scene when they go here, I probably will just use a lighter um a version of it where it's less. So maybe even bring that down. Let's see. So what exactly are we looking for? Where's your section on Egypt? Like that, maybe. So what exactly are we looking for? Where's your section on Egypt? Okay. All right. So that's, that's sounding pretty nice. I really like that. So let's take a look at another scene for, you know, really quickly and see where else we can apply this. So there's another scene over here. Nafta used to use for her magic. Uh, Nafta used to use, this is, the, this is the same one that Nafta used to use for her magic. But how does that help us? Dumpling. Yeah, told you the dialogue is, it's interesting. Um, it's hard to watch this with a straight face. Uh, so let me, let me come over here and let me just, Okay, so that's that's me <laughs> behind the camera, just um, kind of trying to give that sound. Uh, what was that? So I probably shouldn't have done it that loud because now I can't. I don't know if I can even take it out, but a spell in here. A spell in here that can help. So. Uh, let me, so here they're on the second floor. It's a closer, uh, it's, you know, it's a more, it's a smaller environment. It's more closed in. So we don't need, um, as much reverb for this. Okay. So I might just go with another room here, uh, just to approximate that. I keep going to the wrong place. Uh, let's see, let's go into a smaller space. A staircase. I don't, know, I don't actually know what the staircase is appropriate for this. We'll see. How does that help us? How does that help us? Dumpling. There must be some type of spell in here. Maybe. I, I'm actually looking more for a room here. Uh, let's see. Let's try. It's not an attic, but. How does that help us? Dumpling. There must be some type of spell in here. How does that help us? Yeah, no, not really a room. And I can, I, I take very long looking for this kind of stuff because I kind of know what I want, but I'm very. But how does that help us? Dumpling. There must be some type of spell in here that can help. Okay. But how does that help us? So we are getting some, uh, some tail from the reverb there. You can actually hear it. But how does that help us? So it kind of gives us more of a sense of the space as opposed to being like bone dry. But how does that help us? Again, we can play with the early, late refre re, uh, reflection, so we can play around with that. But how does that help us? 
you can get more of that or more of the early. But how does that help us? Dumpling, there must be some type of spell in here. That okay. And now let's play around a little bit with some sound effects and see how that can help. So I'm going to go in here and we have uh, the snake that starts attacking here. Oh, dang. Okay. So what was that? And we're just uh, thinking about redoing that scene. But so let's, uh, I have some sounds here from Boom Library that can give us, uh, let's see, listen to this. Oh, that's uh, not really a snake, but this is a monster snake. So we want to, it's supposed to be larger than life. So let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's try this here. Helen hits. Do we have a, a hiss? Now we're in Jurassic Park territory, but maybe we can do without this. We just we need that one. Uh, <laughs> I will probably spend a little bit more time on this trying to get the right sound, but let's just kind of use this for, for now. This is fine. And we obviously, if we look at the scene, oh, we have uh, columns collapsing there, which I added. By the way, I did most of this in Unreal Engine. So um, just amazing if you're into that stuff. So let's go ahead and maybe add some open air to this and see how we can play with... Okay, so we're I'm probably going to stick to the other one, the first one that we had, which was a large hall. I think it was the um the grand hall. Okay, uh, right here. Nope, that one. Now, this one, uh, the. The snake is outside. What is that? Let's see. What is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? And it, I think it does like a little attack. And there's another attack there. So let me... Um, I might have to create a second channel for this. I'll use the second channel. Maybe I can use this. And just apply the same reverb. So let me delete that. As you can see, we have, it goes again here. Okay, and it sounds a little lackluster because I don't have the reverb on it yet. And also the gain is a little different. So let me bring that back down. Almost there. We take off snap. Okay, and then she goes, oh damn. Um. Okay, and again, this is maybe it's a little too wet. And normally what well, what you could do, because it's again it's outside, is you can uh, use something like Soundly's Place It. So if I were to, I don't know, create a bus for this, just show you quickly. We can do, we can use, uh, the only thing is that Soundly's Place It is not surround. It's stereo. So then defeats the whole purpose. But if they ever make a uh, 5.1, I would use, gladly use it. But this kind of puts it um, in a, in a outside. So we add like a little wall. Well, let's take off the speaker. Let's <laughs> What was that? So it makes it sound like it's more outside. 
Uh, but again, we're not going too much for realism here. We're going just for um, we're going for what feels what feels um, cinematic, or I guess right. Now. Okay, so we have that, and we have. Let's go to Soundly real quickly. Uh, let me actually load in Soundly monitor here, and so we can wrap up with that and add some sounds things collapsing and this film has a lot of action scenes i mean i filmed this with my family for a whole week and there's uh scenes with fighter pilots there's a scene with a car where they're in a car with um a turret gun uh there's a chase scene with a car there's a lot of action i don't even know you know we pulled it off on on a no budget scenario and then there's a whole egypt thing so uh it's going to require a lot of sound design but it's it's fun so let's see collapse Ooh, that is perfect I say it's perfect and then I end up probably end up changing it anyways after I watch it a few times. But right now it sounds great to me. We might not even need to add a reverb to that because Because it might just muddy up the sound. We could, but we might not need to. Yeah, it's not too bad. If anything, if it gets too muddy, we can always just tweak it here in the actual and just take off. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's listen to that in context. Be some type of spell is. Now, of course, I would have to go in and, you know, when he goes, what was that? You really can't hear it now. So that's when I would have to go in and actually try to mix dialogue against music and sound effects. But this is the general Some idea. Type of spell is <laughs> okay. okay, so that's the um, open air reverb um, sort of in context. And as you can see, it has a lot of great presets. It's super easy to use, which is, uh, which is of course, it's pretty much in line with everything from Studio One. That's why I love Studio mm -hmm. One. I've been using it, oops, sorry. I've been using it since 2010 or 11, yeah, 2010, I think, since one of the first versions. And um, it's come such a long way. It's an amazing software. And it's um, just to see these features added now is pretty amazing. So if you found that useful, uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or any thoughts for improvements. I'm always open to thoughts and critique. Uh, if you have any questions on this, I'll try my best to answer. But as always, hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.